Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, where either myself or my good friend and fellow art teacher, Ashley Hurst, tries to create a drawing for your pleasure here inside of 45 minutes live on YouTube. And tonight, I'm going to be doing the drawing, and I'm going to be tackling a pretty complex subject. We're going to be drawing a train. And I'm going to be using graphite and carbon pencils, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, I do want to welcome Ashley with us tonight. Ashley, how are you doing over there? I'm doing great tonight, Matt. Thanks for asking. I hope you guys are doing wonderful out there, and you're ready to take a ride on the Getting Sketchy Express. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, the Getting Sketchy Express, exactly. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a looser drawing. Um, and That's one of the reasons why it's called Getting Sketchy. To be honest with you, 45 minutes is really not enough time to create a completely finished and refined drawing. Um, you know, depending on the medium that you use, you can you can get results that are a little bit more refined uh, and look a little bit looser or less looser. But uh, just keep that in mind that 45 minutes is definitely the amount of time appropriate for a sketch and not a complete refined uh, drawing. So that's what we're going to be doing here tonight. Um, Ashley's going to be manning the chat box. There is a chat box uh, mm -hmm. uh, here on YouTube. And of course, you can ask questions or make comments. If you do have a question or comment that's specifically directed at me or Ashley, if you put that uh, in all capital letters, that'll help Ashley see it amongst all the other comments. Because if you are watching this live, you can see the chat box is starting to roll pretty quickly there. And uh, we won't take it that you're yelling at us at all. It'll just help us see us see the comments among all the other ones as they flash up there on the screen. And uh, so Ashley will be taking a look at that tonight. But I do want to remind you uh, that if you are new to the YouTube channel here, uh, why not subscribe? It's completely free to do so. We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting media and subject matter here. We are actually in our third season of Getting Sketchy right now. And this is episode eight. Is it uh, no, nine? This is nine. I believe it's this nine. is episode nine. Right. So we've got one more episode, which will air next week, and then we're going to take a little bit of a break before we start the next season. But I'll mm -hmm. continue to post videos on YouTube, of course. But we do have a fantastic membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, uh, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses. Um, on colored pencils, pen and ink, watercolor, and these pastels. courses go pretty deep. Not like they go sketchy. very deep. Yeah, we create complete finished works in these courses, and not just one piece of work. We create several different uh, works, and the courses are logically sequenced too. So um, you know that each lesson builds upon what you've learned in the previous module, and no assumptions are made about what you know previously. So we have wonderful courses for beginners, like 25 Days to Better Drawings, and so on. But it also includes weekly live lessons. After we're done here with getting sketchy, we're going to move over to the virtualinstructor.com and I'm going to continue on with a drawing of a lizard man using pen and ink, of course. And uh, tonight is part six of this series. So we'll be going into hour six of this particular lesson. Uh, if you want to check out uh, the membership program, there's a link in the description below. Everyone starts out for free uh, for seven days. There's a seven day free trial. And so you can see if it's right for you, of course. If you want to just check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free, you can do so. There's a link in the description below for that as well. And that will put you on our mailing list so we can email you every time we go live here on Getting Sketchy. And of course, when we broadcast or, or when we add new material to the website. So I think that's all I need to say. You think of anything else, or I can't anything. I can't think of anything to add other than we have a great time <laughs> after this show at the Virtual Instructor. So it'd be wonderful if you guys started to join us over there. Yeah, absolutely. The fun just continues and continues. Obviously, here on Getting Sketchy, we're a, we're we are a, under enormous pressure because there's only 45 minutes. <laughs> My and... nerves are still shot from last week. You know, I drew those gears last week, and I was really excited <laughs> about it. And I was, I think, I was shaken a little bit by the end of that. So. I believe next week when it's my turn to draw, I'm going to try to think of a subject that we can draw the contours and proportions maybe a little quicker and spend a little more time on shading because it's been breakneck speed on my end of the table in these last uh, in these last few weeks with regards to adding value. And Ashley really upped the ante last week with those gears. So if you missed that, you can check that out on YouTube, of course. Um, so I decided to go a little bit more difficult this week with this train. And, and right now I'm the one shaking because um, I don't know how this is going to turn out, of course. Um, but anyway, um, so 
I think that I think we're ready to, to switch over to the main camera. Although Alana is asking Matt, how long is the break until the next season of Getting Sketchy? We probably won't pick up Getting Sketchy again until the summer. So we'll probably take a month, month and a half, maybe two months off in between. Uh, this, it might not seem like this is very exhausting or taxing, but it, it really kind of is. Um, even though it, the show's only an hour long each week, it 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 is a lot of pressure and there is some preparation <laughs> that goes into this too. And then work that goes on afterwards as well. So um, we've got to take breaks every once in a while so that we can preserve our sanity, of course. Rocky Max says, I'm going to draw stick men next week. Yeah, that's right. We're going to draw stick men. We're just going to work on <laughs> our value by making them either light or dark. So <laughs> thanks maybe, for that. Maybe just really skinny people. Maybe they're just really skinny I've people. I've been accused of being a stick man before. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's switch over and get into this one. All right, it looks like I've got the timer already going. We don't want that to Easy go there. Yet. Yeah, um, and the timer is a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to stick to the timer, but first of all, let me go over the surface that I'm going to be working on and talk very briefly about the photo reference up there in the corner. I know that photo reference is small. Um, it would give you an idea of the shapes of the values that I'm going to be working with. It is an old timey train. I know that there are probably some train experts out there that can tell me exactly what type of train this is. I'm not going to even try to speculate because every time we try to speculate about what we know on here, we, we, Determined, we are we are proved that we know absolutely I feel nothing. Safe saying that it's a steam engine, <laughs> and that's as far as I'm going to go. Maybe it is. I know it's a steam. It's got to be. It's got to be. In fact, right? I have taken a ride on a steam engine. It was the last steam engine that Roanoke, the city of Roanoke, ever rode. It was the 611, and I got. Yeah. I was on its its final ride, I guess, before it was before it was retired, and I guess it had already been replaced with diesel engines. So. <laughs> So I, I can I feel I feel confident it's a steam engine. And that was way back in 1932. Well, right? it, the, the train was at least that old, <laughs> I would say, but it was in the late 80s, probably 1988. What a great year! <laughs> well, that was a while ago. Um, all right, here is a look at the materials I'm going to be working on. But before I get into that, I am just working on um, Strathmore drawing paper. This is just white sulfate drawing paper. This is the 400 series. Um, I'm kind of turning around to make sure. Yeah, it is the 400 series drawing paper. This was from a big, large pad, and I just cut a, a piece out that's proportional to the photo reference or somewhat proportional to the reference. I didn't even measure this. I just kind of eyeballed it. Yeah, we're just going it for off. it tonight. Um, and I'm going to be using some blending stumps. These are actually blending tortillas, uh, which is basically just rolled up paper. So you can make these at home if you want. Uh, I know a lot of people prefer to use blending stumps. I don't know how much I'm going to use them, but I do have them handy here. Uh, I'm going to be using a Steedler lead holder with 2H graphite in it. And then I'm going to be using a carbon pencil to really develop the values. Now, the carbon pencil is dull fairly quickly, so I've got a, a couple of them handy here. And I also have a pencil sharpener to sharpen it here, too. Carbon pencils are a nice mix between charcoal and graphite. Graphite is actually an allotrope of carbon. And, uh, you know, so... You might think, well, carbon pencils must be graphite pencils, but they're slightly different. Uh, there may be some clay constituents in here. Um, there's obviously maybe some pigmentation that's been added to the pencil too, but it's a nice dark value. Graphite, as you know, does not get black. It's, it's actually a, a gray, and it's never going to be black. But the carbon pencil will help us get some of those blacks. Um, of course, you can do the same thing with charcoal. If you don't have a carbon pencil, you can definitely use a softer graphite pencil mm -hmm. if you wish. Um, I got a couple of erasers here. Both of these are vinyl erasers. These two are vinyl erasers. Um, this is made by Steedler, and uh, this is a, a Tombow Mono Zero eraser for some precision erasing. Again, I don't know how much I'm going to be using those erasers, but I do have them here with me. And I have a needed eraser, of course. I always have a needed eraser, no matter really what what drawing medium I'm working with. Of all the erasers, I would say the needed eraser is the king. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's get the stuff off to the side, and uh, then we'll we'll start. Uh, Alana asks, uh, uh, Matt, here. Yep. can I use a charcoal pencil if I don't have a carbon pencil? And you said that would be okay. You think yeah, absolutely. It might feel a little bit different, but it'll give you the same kind of black. Yeah, it's the only thing that's going to be really extremely different uh, from the process that I'm going to use and the process that you may use is I'm going to start with a graphite pencil. 
And um, if you're going to do the entire drawing with charcoal, you might approach it a little bit differently. In fact, last, it was two weeks ago, mm -hmm. I did the landscape with charcoal and, you know, I didn't draw anything out. I didn't draw any lines when yeah. we started. I basically painted with the charcoal. Started um, with value. Yeah, and that's a, that's an approach that you could take with this particular image. This image would work great for um, for approaching a drawing that way. This image has some perspective in it, though, so I'm going to kind of start off by uh, creating some forms, basically some cubes, and I'm going to put these cubes in perspective, generally speaking, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to basically carve out the shapes of each one of the cars, the, the engine, I guess that's the engine, right? That's right. Uh, I feel good about <laughs> the, that. The first, it's not first a caboose. <laughs> two visible cars there. I'm not going to really focus too much on the background at this point. In fact, I don't know how many elements of the background we're going to be able to fit in. Um, I'm not sure how many details we're going well, to be Well, there's a lot of good this. contrast just in the train. There is a lot of contrast in the train, so uh, or at least in the engine. So I'm going to focus a lot of my energy on the engine and then maybe let some things fade out as, as it goes backwards into space. But there's definitely some perspective there, so that's what I'm going to start with. So there's not any other pertinent questions well, here. We do have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, one was, let me, let me find it again. It was not in all caps, and, uh, but I can still see them. And if you put your questions in all caps, it makes it even easier to find. I believe the question had to do with the references. I've lost it now. But are the, you don't have to be a member to have access to the reference images. Is that right? No, not at all. Uh, well, no, no, no. The, the reference images we're using here? Yes. No, no, I no, believe no, no, so. Not at all. No, okay. no, no. Uh, what I'll do is I'll post a write up of this lesson in the coming weeks um, over on our website, and I'll include the reference on that write up. Um, okay. So you can get a, a larger version of it. But this, this image comes from Pixabay. You can find it on there. I've edited it, edited, edited it a little <laughs> bit. Um, it, yeah, I just bumped up the contrast, cropped it down a little bit. I, I took the color out of this, you know, did little, little things in Photoshop to make it a little bit easier to draw with. And we do have a course on how to do those kind of things over uh, as part of our membership program. It's called Basic Photoshop for Artists. And we just kind of go over how you can use Photoshop to move elements within mm -hmm. the scene, take elements out, change the colors. Actually you know, make a lot of those artistic decisions right. before you even make your first absolutely, mark. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, then when you're ready to draw your, your references the way that you want it to be. Um, all right, somebody is saying it's the Tweetsie Railroad. Tweetsie and, Railroad, that's and right. this Railroad. is not Tweetsie Railroad. I hate to tell you, I know Tweetsie Railroad, mm -hmm. and uh, I know it well. <laughs> this is not Tweetsie Railroad, but it's, just, it's a similar type of train, I yeah. guess. All right, I um, think I'm ready to bring up the timer. All right. 45 minutes on the clock. So I'm going to start with this 2H graphite pencil. And the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of figure out where the front of the train is going to be. And I'm going to draw a very light rectangle for this. And this might be a strange way to start, but you'll, you'll understand in just a moment. Let's bring it down a little bit further here. Nexus so Gamer asks, how many more lessons are there? There's one more lesson in this se in this season, and then we're going to take a short break before we return closer to summertime. Yeah, that's for getting sketchy. But if you go over to the virtual instructor, there are, oh my gosh, there's, there's over a thousand videos, mm -hmm. I, maybe close to 2,000 videos. And, and there are live lessons every week without a break. Right, right. Uh, okay, so this this rectangle here basically represents in my mind the front part of the train and i could have brought it down a little bit further but what happens is these little corners are going to go backwards into space mm -hmm. well the corners aren't but i'm thinking in terms of perspective so i'm thinking that this goes back towards a vanishing point and this goes back towards a vanishing point although we won't see the other side we really just want to focus on these two corners and this goes back to a vanishing point. There might be a little bit of a slight curve there as the, the railroad tracks kind of curve around. And in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and bring these lines over because that would be the railroad tracks. I like how you're thinking in terms of basic geometric form in the beginning. And I, you know I always like to start things out that way. Mm -hmm. And if I kind of think of this, you know, if you've ever... If you were a Cub Scout, I was, or a Boy Scout, <laughs> then uh, you might remember Pinewood Derby cars. Oh my goodness! And that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, you start with Pinewood Derby cars. You start with a block of wood, 
and then you basically carve the car out of that wood. And this is a good way to think of this. So I've started with a block of wood, so to speak. And you I'm know, going that's to how carve. I always like to think when I'm drawing in perspective, like I'm a sculptor. And I liken, I liken it to, you know, Michelangelo releasing his sculpture from the block. And so I think no, it's, it's a great way it's to very think similar of. with uh, when you're drawn in perspective, because we typically start out with blocks and we can end up with really round and curvy things. Okay, the next thing mm -hmm. I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I want the engine to end. So this is going to be the edge of the engine, and then this means this is going to be the start of the next car. Now, if I, if I lose some of the cars back here, that's okay. That doesn't matter. Uh, just keep in mind that no one will ever see your photo reference unless you show it to them, of course. So we want to create an accurate illusion in this drawing, but it doesn't have to be totally accurate with what the reference is telling us. So we want to create an image that looks like a train, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the train that we have in our reference. So in other words, some of the train's gonna go off the picture plane mm -hmm. here. Um, it, so it's gonna be a little bit different than the reference, but that's okay. Okay, so you can kind of see that I'm kind of carving out the top edge of the second car here. And then the third car kind of comes down like this. There we go. There's those curves we're thinking about. Yeah. And there was a question before the, uh, before the show even began from Ernest Venn. Ernest, I haven't forgotten. You asked if Matt and I had uh, drawn in Silver Point. And I can tell you that neither of us have, but it is on my bucket list. And so maybe, uh, maybe in... Uh, Getting sketchy season four. We might see some silver point. Oh, we're going to break out the silver point That'd be for pretty that awesome. live. <laughs> now, those are pretty light drawings, so we may have to adjust the contrast on the, on the camera so that you can see it well. But I think that would be a lot of fun. All right, so you can see now I've kind of drawn a couple of lines to indicate the top of the windows and the bottom of the windows. But remember, I want the focus to be on the engine. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. I'm just kind of getting an idea of where things are. And then if we have extra time at the end, I'll come back and refine this area. You know, it may be, it may be really nice if, there, uh, if there's more detail in the engine. It just kind of, since this is in perspective and uh, the, the middle car is sort of in the middle ground and the third car in the background, I think it would be totally appropriate to, to lose a little bit of the detail as you move back in space. Well, yeah, that's the plan, but uh, this part's pretty straightforward, mm -hmm. um, and uh, just getting a little bit of information here is going to kind of help me with the engine part. All right, now I'm going to move on to the engine part, um, and since I've got some information here, I can make comparisons with what I've got here to develop the engine. So uh, this part curves up, and I can see that the top of the opening up here is a little bit higher. So I'm just going to kind of make a little bit of a mark of where I think that might end up being. And uh, then I'm going to go back here to the side of the engine. And this train engine um, is challenging a little bit because it's turned at a at an angle to us. It's sort of a three-quarter view. And because of that, it's, it's foreshortened. So Matt's got to forget that trains are really long, you know, cars, and, uh, and really focus on the proportions of this perspective. And what I'm doing here is, you can see I, I kind of modeled these, well, didn't model them, I, I sketched them out real quick, these cars, but now I can make comparisons. Like, I've got the edge of the top of the roof right here. So the, the edge of the train, this part, this little ledge that kind of sticks out, right above this window, I can see it's kind of in the middle of the windows. So I can bring a line straight over from somewhat the middle, and that'll give me kind of the front edge of that train, I can, or the, mm -hmm. the front edge of that ledge. Now, I know that the very front of the train is somewhere right in here. Well, so I like how you make lots of circles. That's the way to make the circles out there. Yeah. Fast and make a bunch of them. Some, and I like to, a great circle. I like to lock my shoulder or actually lock my wrist and move my shoulder mm. to create a circle and draw several circles. That's a good tip. So we got a couple questions from Alana and Brent Dozard about Silver Point. And of course, I've never used Silver Point, but I've, uh, I, I've seen Silver Point drawings. And my understanding is then what I was, 
what I was told by um, by an old professor of mine that had done some silver point drawing is that you can you can get a small round rod of silver point that's sa the same diameter as the lead that is, is that is in Matt's lead holder right now. You just need about an inch long piece of silver rod, a really pure, soft piece of silver, and you can draw with it on a surface that has a, a, a fairly um, noticeable tooth or texture. So I would have to experiment a little bit and find out just what is the best surface um, in, in nowadays that's available to us in modern times because silver point is re really fell out of fashion a couple hundred years ago when, uh, you know, pencils with graphite were invented. I guess that was about 170 years ago or so. It's right before you rode that train for the last right, time. Yeah, that's right. Um, so you can see here, I'm just building off of information that I've got on the surface. And I'm not really second-guessing things too much because this is a quick sketch. But if this was a, a more finished, refined drawing, then I would probably take my time a little bit more with this. But you can see that it's just I'm just building out. Once I get a little bit of information down, then I can use that information to make more comparisons and put more information on the surface. Well, I think it looks good. You've got it, everything's landing pretty much where it belongs. I think you're right on track. Well, thanks. I can easily lose the track. Well, there's all kinds of pun opportunities. I have them written point. down over here. I'm going to try to squeeze in as many you, pun, train puns as I can. You have puns written down? Well, just uh, not very many. Okay, I'm so here's an them. example um, here of where we're going to have a little bit of distortion and things are going to be off a little bit. The distance from here to here needs to be longer than what I have in my drawing. But I'm not going to worry about that too much. But that might be something that I would change if I was spending a little bit more time on this. But I know that I don't have time to really do too much of that. So this little part curves kind of with the front of that circular piece. And that needs to come all the way, the circle needs to come all the way down here, which is right about here. Actually, more like right here. There was a comment again about silver point from Brent Does Art. I guess you would use a black or toned paper for silver point then. From what I've seen, and these are really old drawings, so um, it looks like the paper was relatively light in the silver point drawings that I've seen in the past, but not necessarily white. So the medium is is a dark medium, um, believe it or not, but just not just not very dark. I guess I would liken it to maybe drawn with a 2H or 3H pencil, and this is just from, you know, from... From, from looking at, at uh, re reproductions of images. So I haven't laid eyes on them myself. The Let's question see. is, what, does the drawing get darker over time? Does the silver turn in the paper? Is that the question you're asking That's the question yourself, I have. Or? Yeah, this is, it's, not a, it's not from the chat. This is a question I have, so... I'm going to have to find out. I'm going to have to go get an inch of silver now. I wonder where you purchased that. Well, I'm going to start with the jeweler that's that's around the jeweler that's around the corner from my store. house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in that jewelry store. He has a lot of repair. So I'll bet he has little silver rods. I have some silver at home. My wife used to do some silver work. Mm, I'll see what I have first. She's in a stained glass now. All right, so I'm just kind of drawing the inside part of the large circle that happens up here. I'm sure this has some specific name. You know, we need to bring on an expert of whatever we're drawing into, yeah. you know. Drawing a hawk or Maybe a falcon. Maybe we should start we with the very falconer. few experts we know, and then we'll just draw whatever they're, whatever they're good at. <laughs> <laughs> it might be hard to find a... a uh, expert of birds of prey i don't i don't really know yeah i have i was in a 
I was in a Birds of Prey, in the audience of a Birds of Prey show one time, and that was pretty, pretty exciting. Okay, so there's a lot of detail things happening here up at the front. So I'm just going to kind of sketch out a few indications of some of the major elements that I see here. And then when I go in with the carbon pencil, I'm just going to kind of imply them. So right now, um, I'm just kind of getting an idea of the structure of things. And then the carbon pencil, hopefully, will define the value range enough so that we can understand this to be a train. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get all the little intricate, intricate details that happen in here, but... Just some of them will be enough for the, for the drawing to feel complex and for the object to feel complex. Yeah, it's like you and said uh, not too long ago. You have to kind of decide what is going to be important, what you need to keep, and what you need to leave out in a drawing that's quick like this. We have quite a few questions coming up. Let me see if I can catch up a little bit. I hope I haven't missed any. Before you ask that question, I just want to tell what I'm doing here okay. with, the, with the horizontal line. Uh, we've got these two lights that happen here, and I want to make sure that I kind of get them directly across from each other. So still using that rectangle that I started with, I can draw a, a line straight across and know that I'm going to place the top of this light here and the top of this light here. And then I can place the circles right underneath that so I can get them on the same same plane. All right. Okay, great. Well, let's see. Let me find them. There was a question about our backgrounds. Are we – let me see if I can find who asked it. I apologize. But the question was, are we self-taught artists? And Matt and I both went to school for art. So we are somewhat academically trained, but we've learned so much. Or I would say we're both. You know, we've been self-teaching ourselves. Can you say that self twice in the same sentence? We've been teaching ourselves ever since we got out of school, especially with re in, re in the digital direction, because there's a lot less of that going on when we were students. Yeah, art is something that you, you continually learn from. Mm -hmm. And um, when people say that they're self-taught, part of me cringes a little bit because you do learn things from somewhere, even if you're the one teaching yourself. Um, you are picking up information either by looking at other artists or through practice. If you're practicing, you're, you're truly self-taught. But most of us learn something from somewhere. That doesn't mean that you have to go to college to learn it or you right. don't have to go to an art school to learn it. But all of us are learning something from somewhere. And sometimes, it, a lot of times, it's from other people. Um, if we were all truly self-taught, then that means you pick up a pencil on your own <laughs> and, and then you just start making marks and, and learn things from that. And Like in a vacuum. Right. And we do learn from that. I mean, you do learn. Every drawing that you create, you do learn from it. Um, but we all learn things from other people too. So um, I think everyone is probably a mixture of both being self-taught. Yeah, that's self how I like to think about it. I mean, if you're learning from YouTube videos, you're not really entirely self-taught. You know, you you found a teacher, and I learned so much from YouTube videos, um, art and otherwise. All right, we had another question about. Um, let's see if I can discover it again. It had to do with finding the proportions of something like this. How do you find the or maintain the proportions in a drawing like this? Well, for this particular drawing, I am, like I said, I started out with uh, a, a, a rectangle and then kind of put that rectangle in perspective. And then I started with these back cars. And then when I had bits of information here with these cars, like where the roof line ended up, where the window line ends up, then I can make comparisons between this information to draw this information. And then I feel like I we're looking at ratios when we do that. Do you agree? Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, the, the window line right here, I'll make it a little bit darker. Uh, when I figured this out or where, wherever I placed it on the picture plane, I knew that this line right here where this, this uh, man's kind of hanging over was just slightly above it. You see this? So mm -hmm. I could make that comparison and place that line in a place where I felt like it was accurate. The top part of the roof on this train right here, it comes up and it comes over. And I knew that the edge of the engine matched up right there. So it, 
that's basically what it is in a drawing like this. Now, there are more complex ways that you can uh, try to figure out proportions. You can, you know, use your pencil as a measuring tool. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use, um, you can have your photo reference be the exact same size as your drawing paper, and then you can use really use the pencil can, as a measuring yeah. tool. You could, or you could actually measure the, with a ruler and then transfer that. Yeah. 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 So you, there's if, ways. If your drawing you can, is is. Uh, if your drawing and your reference are the same proportion and you have it as a photograph um, and you can figure out what the sort of the multiplier is, like if your drawing, for example, were three times larger than your reference, then anything you measure in the reference, you can just multiply by three and double check what you've, what you've done in your drawing. So that's a great way to think and to measure proportion if you have the benefit of a physical photograph that you can work from. Otherwise, I think the pencil measuring technique, sight measuring is the way to go. And I think sometimes people get wrapped up in, you know, making everything so super precise and everything. Um, and it doesn't have to be that way. You know, you can be looser with your drawing like we're doing here and and not, you know, I'm making comparisons. I'm trying to, trying to be accurate, but I'm also not being obsessed with it. I'm trying to keep my pencil moving. I'm trying to get as much information on the surface as possible. You know, that's important. If you were obsessed with the proportions, you would, you would never get to the end of a drawing. You can always, you know, make corrections. Exactly. So I think sometimes you just need to dive in and loosen up. And, you know, there's going to be... Like Ashley said, there are going to be some inconsistencies in every drawing. It ha the, a drawing happens over time. You know, it's not like a photograph. And sometimes, unfortunately, we, we find a, a drawing mistake later in, in the latter stages of a drawing. And we got to make a decision. You know, do we want to erase maybe some hard work that we've done? And sometimes that's the right answer. I mean, if the, purport, if the mistake is, is large enough that uh, your train, you know, looks like a, an entirely different type of a of, of a. Vehicle. Vehicle, right. I was going to say locomotive, but I guess it is a locomotive. So um, that's right. So, But if it's really close, it's like I tell my students, you know, we have a reference, we have a subject. We want to get it really close. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And if it's not perfect, nothing's going to blow up. You know, in, in some sometimes your calculations have to be perfect or something's going to blow up, but not in a drawing. Yeah, I would get concerned, very concerned when – when you're working on a portrait or something like that. But, mm. um, and this has quite a bit of precision in it, but again, this is a, a quick sketch um, and we're approaching it looser in a looser fashion. So, um, Which actually takes some real effort when you have a subject like this that has hard and sharp and clean edges. You don't know how much of an effort it, it takes. <laughs> it's not like to, a landscape. <laughs> um <laughs> Because I like to get lost in the details. We could see that from the from your introduction video that shows what we what we do over at uh, the virtualinstructor.com. Oh, what yeah. Matt does over there is get deep into the details. So if you're detail oriented, you may really enjoy some of those lessons. Now, um, we have had some an update from Ernest on the surface for. Silver point. He mentioned that maybe working on cold pressed watercolor paper that has a, a layer of gesso or a couple layers of gesso on it is a good surface. Uh, I'll bet that is a good surface. Gesso kind of creates its when it's when it's applied to a smoother surface than canvas, still creates sort of its own fine sandpaper like texture. So that would be that would definitely be a a, um, a support that I would want to try with silver point. Ernest also says that the silver point will tarnish over time. So I love that idea that your drawing actually changes a little bit over time, like it's living. All right. Now I'm working back to the cars again. Um, and I'm just going to kind of uh, redefine some of the edges here. And we're almost ready to start adding that carbon pencil. And I'm also going to define some of the windows here. Peter says the reference image is small, but he thinks that you've nailed the perspective. Well, thanks. Um, so and the too. truth of the matter is the perspective is the easy part because that is, let's see how many windows we're dealing with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they're not all the same size. We won't count them. We'll just <laughs> go for <laughs> Last it. Last week after, after I had finished my gear drawing and we were off air, I counted my cogs and I was missing one. So I'm glad I didn't count them 
while I was drawing, or it, I might have I might have erased and never finished. <laughs> I'm just going to make it work here. Uh, yeah, the perspective part is is easy because that follows a defined set of rules for the most part. Um, the tricky part is making everything fit within the 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 confines you've made and, and it still makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, like for example, this section right here um, and even this, this car that's a little bit longer, that is a little bit more of a challenge, but I appreciate the compliment. All right, more windows here. And yeah, we're gonna bring our window I must down. have misspoke earlier. Rocky Mac asks, Ashley, did you Say you have your wife in a stained glass. No, she's into stained glass. But I, I that's uh, that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, I thought of Borat. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm guy. sure she'd like to be immortalized in a stained glass window. <laughs> All right, there's some shadows and things that happen down here, and we're going to loosely define them. Let's. That might be a good time. You know, to... Peter mentioned the reference being small, and, and I've talked to Matt about that. I think I'm going to try to, to choose a reference for next week that's vertically oriented so we can see if we can get the drawing and the reference closer in size on the screen, even if they're actual reference, yeah, the, not the, similar in size that I'm looking at. The vertical references always work better um, with this particular format for you to see them. But yeah. um, Unfortunately, trains are long and skinny yeah. and horizontal. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, I think we're about ready. I'm going to do a quick little erase here, erasing out the framing that I used mm -hmm. here. Is it almost carbon pencil time? It's carbon pencil time. So things are going to about to get pretty dark here. And we're going to focus in now. We're going to shift our thinking, or I'm going to shift my thinking here and start thinking more in terms of shapes of dark and light. And uh, I'm just going to start filling in some of those dark areas. And uh, I'm not going to think about what it is that I'm feeling in. I'm just going to think about what value it needs to be and try to emulate that. And I'm also going to try to pull out some of the steam or smoke that's happening. Oh, at the that top was a question. Well. That's everybody's been wondering if you're going to work on that steam a little bit. But so I'm going to news. try to pull that steam out by using some of the material that's already on the surface ah. here. So we're going to start up here with. This little part, whatever it may be called. And I probably need to work a little bit quicker than I'm working right now. So, Alana, um, to follow up on your comment about being self-taught versus like, you know, trained at a school, um, Alana mentions, Matt, I agree. The term self-taught makes me feel very weird because I didn't go to school for art, but I've been learning from tutorials for the past 10 months. YouTube is my art school. Yes, that's right. Mary says, I almost signed up for an art class at our local college. Instead, I became a member at the virtual instructor, so valuable at a fraction of the cost. Oh, uh, well, that's great. That's, Thank that's you. always wonderful to hear. Now, the carbon pencil, you can adjust the amount of pressure that you place on the pencil um, to create some lighter values. So, But this thing, this pencil is super dark as you can clearly see which is helpful because there's a lot of darkness on this train there's a lot of strong contrast on this train Alana also asks Matt would you guys ever send us the reference when you send the reminder email earlier in the day or are you still deciding what to draw at that point hmm. um no, that's that is a uh, a legitimate um, suggestion. What I could do is actually maybe send you a link to the image instead of actually sending the image. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, which might be something I consider in the future. But I know you guys don't know much about sending emails out or anything like that. Like for example, today the email that you received, if you're on our newsletter list, went out to seventy one thousand people. And um, when you send out a, a mass email like that, of course, the spam filters are on, uh, they're on their game at that point. And um, they're already a little bit oversensitive. So sometimes emails that you're meant to receive get blocked for whatever reason. And when you include links in those emails, uh, sometimes that can make those spam filters 
a little bit more zealous than they already are. So I have to be careful with that kind of stuff. And I know people don't realize that they don't, they, they don't know all the stuff that I have to deal with on the back end, <laughs> just, just trying to, <laughs> just trying to communicate with you guys, but that stuff is a reality. And, and so there's a lot of things that would be wonderful for us to do that we just can't do because of uh, the way the world is and the way the internet works. So, I love the way that looks. It, it it really does look like a lithograph. Yeah, it does have a very uh, lithograph feeling, lithography mm -hmm. feeling. Um, and right now, I'm not blending it. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going to try to blend it or not, or if I'm just going to leave it kind of looser like this. Probably if I can get away with it, I'm probably just going to leave it a little bit looser here. But you can see how black that is. Um, you're not going to get anything like this from a graphite pencil. But you are going to sacrifice some of the control you get from a graphite pencil. So you have to kind of insinuate some details here and there. All right. There's a discussion going on in the chat that I look like. Rob Cordry. Rob Cordry. I'm probably saying his last name right, but I looked it up. I think you guys are kind of right. So what a great looking guy. What a great looking guy. <laughs> okay, so it's very important to think about the light source here. Uh, so the light source obviously is coming from almost directly above, actually. It kind of looks like it's coming from above and maybe back over mm -hmm. that hill, maybe back behind those cars. So that is creating darker planes that face where the train is heading. So I'm concentrating on getting this darker plane here. And then of course on the side where the train is getting hit by light, it's gonna be lighter. We've got a questions just rolling in. One is uh, from BlueJean55. Please, could you paint a watercolor landscape this season? Do you mean in getting sketchy? Uh, maybe. That's a, that's a tall order for a medium that sometimes needs to dry a little bit between layers. But uh, it could be fun yeah. to just work on, just work on mostly in the wet. If you're interested in those uh, mediums, I would suggest looking a little bit deeper into the lessons that we have on the website. Um, this, is, this is really, since this is live, um, I think I could paint something in 45 minutes yeah. if it were in acrylic or oil paint. Um, watercolor, I, I really look at watercolor as being sort of a, a partner of mine when I use it, and I don't rush the watercolor. Sometimes I just have to wait. It's kind of like, well, it is exactly like watching paint dry. Sometimes you have to do that. <laughs> yeah, some mediums are just not going to be suited for quick sketches like this. In fact, there's 14 minutes left. I don't know if I'm going to get finished with this. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to work. I'm, I know I'm not going to get to a finished state where I'm completely happy with it. But Well, you've got a good-looking sketch going on well, right now. Thanks. The light's already starting to happen up there. Um, yeah, once we start getting some of the contrast in place, it'll be a little bit clearer as to what's going on because there is a lot of high contrast in here. Now... Uh, Melody asks, uh, Ashley, could you please ask Matt to describe his 30-day course? Um, we have 25 days to better drawings. Okay, maybe that's it. Um, which, it's called 25 days to better drawings, but I get a lot of people asking me, uh, or, or sometimes people get confused and think it's actually, you have to do it in 25 days, and that's not the case. It's, it's 25 lessons that center wow. on the foundations and principles of drawing. So we cover things like perspective, uh, form, cross contour lines, um, the kind of the proportion. <laughs> uh, every day there is a different subject that we cover, and um, it really is a complete course on on drawing. And it's definitely geared to beginners, um, but lots of folks have taken that course who aren't beginners and have. Uh, and have benefited greatly from it. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's what she's talking about there. 
I think we're up to 17 courses right now. So there, there's quite a number of them. They're all included. Peter asks that the carbon carbon pencil seems very soft. Is that correct? Does it have a very it, soft feel it to it? It is very, very, very soft. It takes very little effort to get uh, tone on the surface. You can see I'm holding it now at the very end of the shaft, and I'm just trying to get just a, a light gray in there. And it really picks up the tooth of the paper, too. You can see that. This paper mm -hmm. is not heavily yeah, textured. Yeah, it's not. It's just the regular 80-pound drawing paper. Mm -hmm. I, I miss... If I missed that at the beginning, I'm not sure. Stephen Black asks, do you have a favorite medium? Uh, are you talking to me or, or Ashley? Well, I guess we both no, say. Probably both. Yeah. It's, not, it's not specified. Do you have one, Matt? I know um, you work in a I, wide variety of Yeah, medium. I like lots of different mediums, and it really depends on what kind of mood I'm in or what kind of image I want to create. A lot of times it's just what, what I'm inspired to work on uh, or what medium I'm inspired to work with. Um, obviously, since this isn't my job, there's, there are just times when I need to work with mediums that I'm not totally jazzed to Maybe work with. Maybe that's a better question. What's uh, your least favorite medium? Oh. You may not want to answer that. <laughs> you can ruffle some feathers out there. We all have our favorites. Um, no, I can answer that. But that also changes, you know, because sometimes my least favorite medium sometimes turns out to be a medium that I'm really enjoying at the time. I am I am an oddity. Um, yeah. So I can vouch for that. Don't <laughs> don't base what I'm saying here on your personal preferences or what you like to do. But uh, it's different depending on on what I'm using. But I would say my, my top favorites are probably uh, colored pencils, pen and ink, graphite. Um, so you would prefer, would you say pastels. you prefer the drawing media over the paint media then? Is that no, safe because to say? that's, not, that's okay. not necessarily safe to say either because I really like working with oils too, water mixable oils. Yeah. Oil paint, I would say, is probably my favorite. And then after that, just the pencil. Graphite. I would say my most challenging subject to work with is watercolor. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true for a lot of people. And I think that it's unfortunate that a lot of people think that watercolor is easy and they go into it. They go into watercolor expecting it to be easy because it's everywhere. I mean, watercolor is everywhere. You can buy it everywhere and people naturally assume because it's watercolor, then it must be easy. I had and, a, 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 good friend of mine just this week say, I'm thinking about taking up watercolors because I've been told it's an easier paint to start with. And um, it is not I did not necessarily agree, with. you know, because I think that uh, watercolor presents, presents some unique challenges. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like other paint mediums. It's its own thing. Speaking of its own thing, we had a question that's kind of unique to me. Um, can oil pastel, this is from from Ernest again, can oil pastel be used over oil paint? I've never done that, but I have used oil pastel over acrylic or on acrylic paintings and on tempera paintings. I can't imagine why you couldn't put oil pastel over oil paint. The only danger of putting a different surface over oil paint that I'm aware of is preventing the oil in the paint from truly drying, which can take a few months. Um, but since oil pastels never dry, I can't imagine that they're going to create like a uh, like a barrier, a sealed barrier over the oil paint, like maybe painting with acrylic over oil would. Yeah, I would say the thing to watch out there for is I wouldn't put oil paint over oil pastel. Oh, definitely not. Uh, because the oil pastel is not going to be dry. Yep. Never dries. Um, Laura asks, Matt, how did you get the Band-Aid this week? It's like he's got a Band-Aid that the, moves it's around. It's the same thing. No, it's <laughs> the same, same stuff. You know, I, I, I work and uh, my hands crack, my knuckles crack, and, and instead of you looking at a big old gaping wound on my hand, I just cover it up. So that's just the... We appreciate that. That's just the truth of the matter there. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was thinking about going band aid list tonight, but it's just oh, okay. We've got a question here um, about the timing of the show, Matt. I'm confused. When does getting sketchy start? I missed it somehow, and we'll be in the live session. Oh, and we'll be the we'll 
the live session postponed tonight. Is it postponed tonight? Oh, no. No. Um, and, and this you, is, uh, you clearly this just is live Germany. in an area that doesn't have daylight savings time. Yeah. So we're using daylight savings time in, in uh, you know, different places in the world. And most of the United States is one of those places. I think maybe the state of Arizona doesn't participate, and which is a great reason to probably move there because I... I detest daylight savings time. It's where we move our clocks around an hour twice a year, regardless of what the sun has to say about it. And it causes a lot of confusion. So we set our clocks forward on this past weekend. And the yeah, show so does air at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, and one thing that you can do is if you're on our newsletter list and you got the reminder today... Uh, just you know, click on the link in that reminder, and uh, YouTube will have a countdown. It'll tell you. There was a couple comments that uh, had passed and has popped up again um, about the reference, you know, and and in a way for our uh, for our friends to access that, and putting the link to the reference in the chat or in the description. Is that a possibility? I, I think it is. I'll have to check okay. and make sure. I. I there are there are some rules and things yeah. that people just don't really know about, and um, I'm hesitant to just kind of do things without you know making sure that everything. And then get sure a nasty gram from YouTube. Right. Um, I have to kind of make sure that what I'm doing is it's what I should be doing. Um, I know some people just throw caution to the wind, but <laughs> um, occasionally though their channels are punished for that. Uh, there are just people don't, I don't think people really understand all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Um, not just for getting sketchy, uh, oh, the yeah. stuff that goes on a daily basis that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people like me have to think about. We'll throw a little bit of shadow underneath here. I had to sharpen this pencil a few minutes ago and, uh, this one is almost already too dull to work with. Alana says, we have less than 10 minutes, actually less than six now, and I haven't even started shading yet. Failing the challenge. No, you don't have a timer, No, Alana. no, 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 no. You're no, not no. failing the challenge. You just keep going. Yeah, and um, I am... I'm, and I don't think Matt's failing the challenge either. This is looking no, I don't really think I'm great. Gonna, I don't think I'm going to get as far as I want to get on this, but uh, I'm going to get as far as I can, and we'll see. We'll see how much time is left here, because the timer is a suggestion. Mm-hmm. But I really love working with this carbon pencil here. It is. It's. Yeah, it's I have a, a carbon pencil in my classroom. It's just I don't know how it got there, but I think I'm gonna think I'm gonna give it a shot this this weekend just to see what it feels like. It's definitely a different. It's different from working with charcoal, but similar, and it's different than working with graphite, but similar. So it's. So it looks like um, it looks like Germany observes the daylight savings time too, but maybe doesn't set their clocks back and forward on the same days that we do. I see. I thought I thought that some of the European countries also participated in this craziness. Well, I actually like it because I like gaining more sunlight. Well, I like it right now, Makes me and feel I would more I like to like fall I would like to fall back this last time and never spring forward again. And keep our sunlight in the evenings as much as we can. Could you imagine a winter where it gets dark at six thirty instead of five thirty? What a dream! Yeah, what but a there's dream isn't there an true. opposite effect to that? It I don't know. Wouldn't you be getting up when it's really dark? That I'm fine with that. I get up in the dark anyway. <laughs> All right, we'll try to get some of these darker tones up here. Most of these values right here are pretty dark. So I should be able to scribble some of these in really quickly here. Priya says the engine has turned out fantastic, Matt. Uh, thank you. Pat says it looks like charcoal dipped in an oily material. Interesting. Yeah, that is, that's actually a that's kind a of a good description of what it kind of feels like here. And I, I had a lithography class in college, and it was the most frustrating and also the most interesting course I ever had. Uh, because with, lith with lithography, um, traditionally you draw on a big 
limestone. And, um, you know, in, in that class, we started on these plates, these uh, metal plates, and then we worked our way to the limestone. And the mm. teacher really liked me and let me work on the largest limestone slab they had. That's how you know you're the teacher's pet. You get the big, <laughs> you get the big rock. Well, um, and that was also a lot of pressure because I had to create a large drawing. And the way lithography works is you create a drawing on the surface using these special wax crayons, these special crayons. Then you put the, the stone through a series of chemicals and actually your entire image is completely erased during the process. And then you roll ink back onto the surface and the image... Hopefully. Hopefully <laughs> reappears there with ink ready for you to print. Well... When I worked on the plate, I went through three or four plates before I actually had the image reappear. <laughs> wow. So not only so, was it a bigger plate, but you, you repeated it. You repeated the process three times. No, when I was working on the plates. Now, when I worked on the stone, oh, okay. uh, it worked the first time because I had honed my skills there. <laughs> um, but there was a lot of pressure working on that stone. Uh, but I was very thankful that the teacher... Um, allowed me to work on that large stone. But then yeah. you have to put the stone into the press. And if you put too much pressure on the press when you're rolling it through, you can break the stone. And at the time, there was only one rock quarry where you could get these stones. So they were incredibly expensive. So not only was it scary having to do that, um, that I was afraid that my image wasn't going to reappear, but it was also scary that I was afraid I was going to break that large stone. But thankfully, I didn't. I broke a lot of things in my college art classes. That's the time that you get to break stuff. Yeah, I guess so. I there broke were... a huge bandsaw in my sculpture class as soon as the as as soon as a brand new blade had been put on it. Mm-hmm. So I felt awful, but I was paying a lot in tuition, so I didn't feel that bad. <laughs> well, there were people in the class that broke their stones, yeah. um, and she was not happy. Our teacher wasn't. All right, I know there's a guy in this window, but because of the time, since I've got 48 seconds, I'm going to leave him out. And then let's see how much time. we It's 7.27, so I really don't have a whole lot of extra time tonight. Psycho asks, where did you get that picture? It came from Pixabay, just so you know. Brent Desart says, Congress is working on eliminating the time change. I hope they vote it through. I'll have to check that out. All right, so I'm going to work with the uh, the timer being a suggestion. Always here. a suggestion. It's become more and more of a suggestion the deeper we get into the uh, season. Well, I knew that this subject was going to be difficult in the amount of time, but um, now that I'm get, got the carbon pencil working here, that's why we don't use steam engines any, anymore. You know, they just don't arrive on time. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, there's just a lot of complicated stuff up there. So, Ernest says in the Arctic, there's 24 hours of sunlight in the summer. That's that would be a good place to go. We could play golf all week long. Except it's in the mm-hmm. Arctic. It's true. You have to have <laughs> you have to have a dark colored golf ball to see it up there. Now, um, Allison asks, are you using hard, medium, or soft? or soft charcoal. Allison, it's not charcoal. It's yeah. a carbon pencil. And are they designated as hard, medium, and soft? Um, no, no. Or I'm not really of, sure. Okay. This one has the number 595 on the side, but I'm not, uh, sure, I'm not really that, sure if that has any designation yeah. because this is made by Generals, and mm. Generals uh, makes a layout pencil. Yeah. And the layout pencil has the number 555 on the side, and that really has no... To my knowledge, it has no real meaning. Uh, okay. There was a question about where can I get carbon pencils in Europe. I would I would um, just try to order them from Generals if you want to use the same pencil that that uh, Matt is using. All right, I'm gonna give these pencils a quick. Generals sharpen. is a good a good company. And then I'm gonna try to somehow bring the sketch to a finished look here. <laughs> Uh, if I just, can here. Just take that dark black spot that you have in the front of each of those co- uh, passenger cars and just smear it out. It'll make it look like the train's moving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll make it look like it's moving really fast. 
Um, I am going to frame out some of these windows here. And maybe give a quick little indication of some value in here. Pat mentions that uh, they like the uh, suggestion about, I guess, keeping daylight or ending daylight saving time, but does look forward to the time where we where we spring forward so that we get more daylight. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's I, what we I just like... did. And it is nice. I can actually feel my mood going up. My um, it, as the daylight is kind of lingers in the evenings, and I'm one of those people that is really affected by light. And you know, when it's dark for a long period of time, I'm just not happy. And I'm not happy in the winter usually. You guys know how much I hate winter. Well, <laughs> uh, the members know how much I hate winter. Um, and you know, when it gets to this time of the year, I get excited. And it definitely changes my mood. Mm -hmm. I wish there was some way to get rid of winter. <laughs> just, well, we just, just move to the equator. Yeah, that's true. But then <laughs> that's just... It's, it's really nice down there. Very temperate. I don't know about that. <laughs> I, have a friend from, I have a friend from Ecuador, but she lives in Florida mo about half the time and uh, Ecuador the other half of the year. So Florida is like... Where she goes to get her cold weather? I don't know. I mean, uh, from from what she tells me, I've never been to Ecuador. It's pretty mild and temperate there. But I know that her her place in Ecuador is kind of at a, in a high elevation, so that could have something to do. Oh yeah, with the comfort has level. To do with it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, add a few more windows, and then I'm gonna try to do some work with the steam. Oh, here. good, because Melody asks, please remember to add the steam. Well, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to try my best. I really don't have a plan of action here with the steam, but we'll see what happens here. Uh, we'll Tammy likes how you're bringing out the details without sort of fussing over them, you know? Oh, yeah. I don't have time to fuss over Right. It's, 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 a, it's light and dark suggestions of details, right, and our brain fills this. it in. Let's take a little bit of the carbon here, and let's just move it around up here. Norlene, thank you for a answering Kyle's question about the video. Yes, it's available as soon as this as soon as this uh, this live session is over. The video um, is available on YouTube. All right, so we'll take a little bit more. So I'm just taking what's here on the surface, and then just kind of working around some of these light areas. We're seeing some of the lighter smoke just to create some contrast. Perfect medium for this. It, I mean, it's it's like soot. The medium itself is like like soot. Very dark. There was a question earlier. It's come up again. I'm sorry if I missed it. What paper would you recommend for alcohol markers? And Matt, you've used alcohol markers in conjunction with colored pencils before mm -hmm. what kind of paper do you like to start on um i would suggest using marker paper there's there's oh, okay. a specific type of paper called marker paper and i like the paper by canson canson marker paper it's very thin um mm -hmm. and the surface is very smooth is it a non-porous surface does the does the ink soak in or dry on top yeah the ink um does not bleed like it does on on like regular a more paper. fibery feeling paper yeah. Okay. All right, I'm well, I don't know how bit. Matt did it. Just ten minutes ago, it looked like he barely started shading, and now it looks like a whole drawing. So, well, not quite a whole drawing, but oh, I like how I like how things sort of uh, fade away near the end. I think that's I think that keeps our attention on on this on the engine itself as the focal point. Definitely out of necessity there. <laughs> so uh, just a little bit with the eraser here. Just smoothing things out a little bit. It gives us an impression of some of that steam and the smoke. Uh, with more time, of course, we could really, really define this a little bit more. Um, I am going to put just a little bit of information here in the foreground. So it does feel a little bit more finished.
So now that you've used carbon pencils and they're and to answer a question, what's the difference between charcoal and carbon pencils? And I guess this could be technical or it could be in terms of how they feel. Well, a carbon pencil is carbon and a charcoal pencil is burnt organic material. So okay. they are different. And as I mentioned before, um, graphite is an allotrope of carbon. So... I don't know what that means exactly. I know that sounds all fancy and everything, but uh, <laughs> but they're related. They're, Carbon and graphite are maybe you could think of them as being in the same family. Yeah, and but the as according to the way they behave on the surface, mm -hmm. um, the carbon pencil is kind of like a mix between charcoal and graphite. Uh, it really feels more like a, a compressed charcoal pencil, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit more buttery. A little bit smoother. Um, Doesn't feel as scratchy on the on the surface. Well, it sounds scratchy, but it feels smoother. Okay. Like when you're making marks. Yeah, we can definitely sounds hear that. Sounds super scratchy, but it feels feels almost like an oil based colored pencil, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to call this one finished. Even though I'm honestly, I'm not completely happy with it. Looks like a train. Yeah, it's a, I think it's <laughs> um, a good-looking sketch. But, uh, but oh well. With a little bit more time, maybe get some more detail. Maybe I chose a subject that was. I just think a Matt bit should more. take the same image and use it on the virtual instructors' live lessons, and spend about ten weeks working it up, and then we could look <laughs> at the two and compare them. <laughs> they would look a lot different from each other. Yeah, that might be anyway. kind of cool to do. All right, uh, we have anything pertinent to discuss about the drawing here and uh, if not we'll go ahead and switch um, over. Pat says wonderful. Norlean says thank you both. It looks you, great. Pat. Is there a lesson in one of the courses using the carbon pencil? I would say not yet. There's not. No there isn't. The car a carbon pencil just isn't it's kind of like gouache of the drawing world. It's like a fringe medium. I guess. Um there maybe, are, maybe not after tonight, though. Well, there are clearly some limitations to the pencil, but you can see when you start getting the blending stump involved, you can really work it around. But yeah. as you might can notice, you can't move it as much as you can charcoal. So uh, that's definitely a drawback. But this pencil is great for creating really strong contrast in a pretty short period of time and creating kind of a looser sketch. But, you know, it, this can also be used for refined drawings as well. But because the tip doesn't stay sharp for a very long period of time, it's probably better suited for larger drawings. So, all right. Was that the... All right. We have one more question. I think, okay. do we have time for one more question? Yeah, we have time. Okay. You've yep. previously said there is no charcoal and white charcoal. So is the <laughs> so it is pigment, I suppose. What is the difference between colored pencils and white charcoal. Now, first of all, let me say, I'm not sure if there's no charcoal in white charcoal, but I can tell you that white charcoal is not pure charcoal. I feel like it's calcium carbonate. Didn't we, didn't we look that that's up? That's speculated that's, because that's right. the, per, the companies brand. that make white charcoal don't disclose what okay. it actually so it's is. Like, it's kind of like ketchup. You know, they're all very similar, but the recipe is specific to the company and we'll never know. And, um, yeah, so it, they're, it's kind of a trade secret, I guess. I see. Mm. But it's not like a wax-based or oil-based color pencil. What, white charcoal? Yes. No, not yeah. at all. It doesn't have any any sort of a slick medium in it, I no, don't charcoal. No, white charcoal is definitely... It, it, it behaves like just charcoal. like regular charcoal. Mm -hmm. It's just white. Right. So, but um, I don't think it's pure charcoal, clearly. Definitely not. Uh, but it's definitely similar to uh, to white charcoal. Mm -hmm. I see someone is saying it's typically a burnt bone, calcium-based like material. It it's isn't a, pigment. That's interesting because there's a so. there's an oil paint bone black that is that is burnt bone, but it's but it's black. So again. Again, there. Interesting. There are some. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to figure this out and try to make myself a white charcoal pencil, and then not tell anybody what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> there are some unknowns with the white charcoal. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and switch right. out over here. All right, everybody. Thanks for sticking around for the last hour or so. Uh, if you did, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope you. Learn something about being exposed to carbon pencils here tonight, something that uh, a medium I don't think we have featured anywhere on the site, anywhere or anywhere here on YouTube. Um, I enjoyed using the pencils. 
I do uh, feel like that this is a complicated subject to tackle with those pencils, but again, high contrast is nice there. Um, anything else to add there, Ashley? I've enjoyed your questions. I know some of you are going to join us in a few minutes over at the virtual instructor. So I guess we'll take a break, get a glass of water, and we'll see you there. I may get more than a glass of water. <laughs> I might drink a couple of glasses of water because I'm going to be continuing on with a actually defined medium or a detail-oriented medium, I should say. I'm going to be working with pen and ink as we continue with our lizard man, which I'm really loving how yeah, that's really, turning really out. It's a really exciting image. I know you're interested to see what it looks like. Matt's going to have to show it to you when it's finished and when we're Probably won't be finished next week, will it? But maybe when we return in the next season. Uh, no, it won't be finished next week. That's for sure. But what I will do is, like I do with all the Live Lesson series, I'll create a time-lapse video of it. So if you're not a member, you'll at least see the start from finish. Of course, there won't be a lot of instruction in there. That's reserved for the members. But I will create a time-lapse video. Okay, that. that's great. I'll share that here on YouTube. All right, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. If you're not heading over to the virtual instructor, um, if you are heading over to the virtual instructor, I hope you have a uh, good week, too. If you're not headed over to the we'll virtual just, instructor, you're crazy. <laughs> we'll just uh, see you in just a few <laughs> minutes, of course. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Good night, everybody.